Well, a ginkgo tree is really interesting because um, it's sometimes considered to be a living fossil. Uh, for a very long time, you can only find the fossils of this tree um, around the world. Uh, so the ginkgo used to be in North America, uh, across the at least across the northern hemisphere at the, at the very least. Um, but it just disappears from the fossil record for a really long time, and then it was discovered in China, uh, and ch the Chinese probably in a monastery somewhere, um, had a few living individuals uh, and probably have been cultivating it since about 1100 AD. And um, what's really interesting about it is it's, it's, it's part of its own group. It is a gymnosperm, so that may not mean anything to you, but it just means that uh, it's in the same major group as pines and, and spruces and firs and some things like cycads, but it's, it's a major group, but it's the only living individual for its group. Ginkgo biloba is the uh, scientific name for this plant. So ginkgo is the genus name, and biloba, two lobes, uh, is the name, it's called the species epithet. So the specific uh, scientific name is ginkgo biloba. And so when you see that in the medicinal aisle, you're talking about extracts from this tree. All plants have uh, different pigments that they use to attract, well, to collect light as the sun pours down on them. Uh, and these pigments, most of the time we see are green because chlorophyll is the major one that does photosynthesis. But there are accessory pigments like the carotenes, xanthophylls, anthocyanins. And the xanthophyll is the one that is the yellowest. And so what the ginkgo has the most of is, is xanthophyll. So, Later in the season, as um, fall hits, the, the day length gets shorter and things get drier in the fall and it starts to get cooler. Those three things trigger the leaf to shut down the chlorophyll, kind of break it down. And the other colors that you don't normally see that are kind of behind that come to the forefront. And so now you see yellow. And so you might even see colorations moving across the leaf as the leaf starts to change color and, and retract nutrients. Um, so the green goes away and the other colors behind come out um, and that's how that, that's kind of the basic idea. So this has more xanthophyll as opposed to this one which has more um, anthocyanins. Once they really finish that color change, uh, the leaf is basically useless for photosynthesis and all it takes is one good, real good cold snap for it to tell the leaf to just cut off. It's, you're done for. And so at that point, because it's useless, they all kind of shut off. They have a space at the very bottom of their leaf called a separation layer. And that separation layer seals itself off. And what it does is then will separate. And it keeps any of the nutrients from leaving the tree that would have gone into the, the leaf. And so uh, all at once, it just kind of happens because there's one good cold snap, or, or most of the time it's one good cold snap and then one good wind burst and then off they go. For a long time it's been used um, as kind of a stimulant for the brain. Uh, I have heard stories of college students during finals week taking um, supplements of ginkgo and there is some truth to how it works you know, to try to make them smarter during that last uh, week. I will say that if you are trying this it's not worth it because you have to have taken it for a while before it's helpful. But what it does is it improves blood flow uh, it increases the capillary size, and so your blood and your brain actually flows better, and so you get more oxygen. And you actually do probably think better uh, because the blood is, is flowing a little better up there. Um, so it probably counteracts some of that sleep, sleep deprivation, but um, you can't just take it a few days a week and hope that your final is going to go well. But it is a medicinal plant. It's also, the, the female seeds are edible, and people can collect them. Uh, it's just a stinky process to go through, but people make soups. Um, but it's an edible plant, it's a medicinal plant, and uh, it's, if you think about it, it's kind of a cool plant in that it's basically kind of come back from the brink of extinction. Um, every other related species is gone, and it's the last one that we have anything like it.